Um, a couple weeks ago on my stream, I drafted a hand hand coat, which is really just a series of rectangles. Uh, so today we're going to go ahead and sew that coat. I cut it out um, a little while back after I drafted it, and I just haven't got around to sewing it yet. Um, so here I've got my pile of pattern pieces. They're all labeled. Um, I like to label them with like a piece of tape so I don't forget what's what <laughs> in between cutting and sewing them. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and um, sew these sleeves and then I'm going to set them aside and I'm going to sew the body. Um, then I'm going to serge what I need to serge and then I'm going to sew the sleeves in. And then we're going to do hems and collar. Um, normally with a mock-up, which is what this is, uh, I would be sewing at a max stitch length, which on my machine is a five, um, which is a basting stitch. And I wouldn't be doing any serging or anything like that because we're really just checking the fit. But because this is such a simple garment and I'm pretty positive that I didn't really even need to make a mock-up, I thought it would be fun to um, make this a real garment, the mock-up version. And then, oh, my dog is so upset. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to do some shibori dye work on it afterwards because it's just out of washed muslin. Um, so it's like a nice, fresh base that I can do some really fun dye work on. Um, so I thought that would be a fun little dye project. Okay. So he's super pissed off because he can hear me, but there's a baby gate so we can't get in here. Um, so hopefully he'll stop doing that. I might have to text Trey and see if he'll come get him. So you may remember from, if you watched when I was drafting um, this sleeve originally, that it's a funky little folded thing. Um, it's kind of like this weird little origami thing. I've never ever come across this in a sleeve before, but basically um, they fold part of the uh, rectangle across and then the other part of the rectangle down and then you sew those two seams together and it creates like a little tube. Um, so see, it's literally just like a big rectangle. Um, and I'm gonna do some funky little origami folding. So you fold up the base across like this, and then you fold down the top, and it creates a shaped sleeve. It's so interesting, I have never ever seen that before. Um, so, bef like, originally I was just going to cheat it, and then I was like, this is a really interesting, his, like, way to do a, to shape a, a garment, um, that's kind of a historical thing. So I wanted to do it, because I just thought it was neat, and <laughs> I've never seen it before. So here we go, um, I'm just going to line this stuff up, I'm going to stitch it. I have marked on my piece here where the end needs to be, um... I did myself a favor and I went ahead and notched all my stuff. Um, I think I said on my stream last time that I'm sometimes super bad about notching things when I'm going to be the one who sews it. Because um, I'm like, I know what that looks like, it's fine. And then when I get to actually I've cut it and I'm constructing it, I'm like, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> I made things so much more challenging for me um, on the tail end. So take it from me. Do future you a favor and not your shit when you're patterning. It'll make things a lot easier. So, also like I said on my stream yesterday, this is going to be super important for me to um, make sure that I don't stitch over my ending point here because that's turning this into basically the... Um, sleeve hem of my garment. So, ooh, wait. I am pinning the wrong part because I'm a big old doofus. I got my tube all turned around. Wait, let's redo that. Good thing I caught it before I did it.
I would have been very upset. <laughs> I would have sewed it and then been like, but wait, though. Wait, every time I move it, I'm like, is that right? It should be right. Maybe I'm just second guessing myself here and I should. Yeah, that's right. Okay, it just does something weird when I pick it up and it makes me think that it's wrong. When it's flat, it's right. <laughs> T-shaped garments can be kind of confusing sometimes because they have all these points and when you're not used to sewing garments that have points because they're not rectangles, you can be like, they're so simple that, that you start second guessing yourself. You're like, that can't possibly be right, right? It doesn't go to a point there. That doesn't make any sense. Um, and then when you get it all together, you're like, oh no, okay, <laughs> that was correct. I'm not an idiot. So, we're gonna get this sewn. I'm not 100% on how I'm gonna serge this. I'd like to serge it all together. Um, serge the uh, seams together because I think that that will make the nicest, most kind of commercial finish on the garment. On the hem of the sleeve, it might be a little bit tricky because of the way that it kind of turns. I think I'm gonna need to slice that corner. Um, so we're just gonna have to kind of play that by ear and see how it goes. Yeah, it did that yesterday too. I cleared, for whatever reason, it's just doing that. I cleared the, um, that little input on Steam when I like put in what it, what thing it is that I'm streaming. And for whatever reason, it says it's, when I go to submit it, it's like, okay, it's no, it's no classification of stream because it doesn't correlate to a game, right? Obviously. Um, and then when it goes to actually stream it, it's like, check out this person's latest stream from Final Fantasy VIII. I'm like, this is not a Final Fantasy VIII stream, but I, I don't know. I've done what I can. <laughs> okay. Just like with those masks yesterday, sewing into the corner, this corner, because it has to turn to go into the sleeve hem, super important not to stitch over it. So I have to manipulate where the needle falls. Because otherwise I'll get a big old pucker and it'll be gross. And also just like yesterday, I have one pair of snips that I like to snip my, um, threads with and I leave them all over my room and I can never find them. <laughs> Every time I go to snip a snip a thread I'm like, where are they? Yeah, I don't know what class of because it's not a game. I like because I've I've put the indicators of like sewing and cosplay and all that stuff, but it's yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so Here's this funny little thing, right? I said that this was weird, and it, it is, in fact, weird. Um, it ends up like this. This is the shape of the sleeve, which I think is kind of funny. Here, I'm going to put it on. Whoop! It's a sleeve! <laughs> 
Honestly, I really like this technique. I think it's really cool. I think I'm going to use it in the future in my T-shaped garments. Because a lot of times, not a lot of times, every time I do a T-shaped garment, if it doesn't like gather at the sleeve, which is what most European T-shaped garments do, um, or Western T-shaped garments do, instead of, um, instead of doing that little fold, I just literally like shape it like this, but this is cooler. Oh yeah, just chatting would be a good one. All right, I'll do that for the future, thanks. That's really useful. Go throw that over there. Now I gotta do the exact same thing for the other one. Um, I'm also kind of questioning myself on this because I don't remember, I. this is kind of the problem when you, um, cut and sew on like different days. I'm like, did I flip this? Because sometimes with rectangles, I don't bother to flip it because it's the exact same thing. But in this one, I'm like, did I flip the sleeve? Because I do need one on one side and the other on the other side. And it looks like past me did me a big old favor and did it correctly. <laughs> it wouldn't matter so much on the mock-up. I mean, except for that I want them to actually be like a real um, garment, but it would just mean that on one side of the sleeve there'd be like a seam and on the other side it'd be on the back. Um, so it is not full length of the side seam. It kind of comes like halfway down. I'll show you guys when I uh, sew it on. It won't make a pocket or anything like that. It will literally go into the side seam. So it's just gonna be long. It'll come like way down. Um, in the more western style ones they come a little higher up um and to compensate you make a rectangle or you make a square gusset they're usually like three or four inches across and then you turn that into a little triangle and you insert that between the sleeve and the body of the coat of the um chemise or shirt or whatever that way you can raise your arm really easily but this one just comes down farther um and it because it's already triangle shaped on that underarm, you're gonna have that movement. Um, so it's really I think this is really fascinating because I've made shit tons of Western style T-shaped garments in my time in theater and making garments for like Ren fairs and stuff like that. Um, and the way that it's done is very different for for uh, Japanese garments, of course, because you know, they're isolated for a vast majority of their history from the West. And so they're gonna develop different techniques for solving what are essentially the same problems, um, which I think is really, really interesting. <laughs> That's kind of one of my favorite thing in um, sewing and pattern making and all that shit is seeing how different cultures kind of solved these problems that um, are just inherent to the nature of getting a getting a flat fabric to form around the body, which is, a, you know, has all these different curves and stuff. Um, and different cultures all came up with totally different uh, solutions. And then they called that fashion. <laughs> And again, on both sides of this point, I gotta be really careful not to overstitch in those corners because they're going to be in the in the sleeve hem, obviously, like I said, it's gonna have to turn that corner to become the sleeve hem. And I'm gonna have to, I was planning on doing a double rolled hem. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily gonna be possible. I also might just tape that hem. Um, oh, sorry, I gotta blow my nose. <laughs> Um, I might also just tape that hem with bias tape because that always looks nice and is a really clean finish and it, it might be a little easier in this case. 
but also um, the side, especially the corner that goes against the body, has to be able to open up so that it can go on both seams. Yeah, the Japanese solution is um, uh, very simple and very elegant, you know? And I feel like that's how uh, Japanese artistry is just kind of in general. Uh, and I think it's really interesting that the, that fa their fashion follows kind of the same format as a lot of different traditional arts in Japan. Um, you know, they could manufacture this fabric in specific widths, uh, and kimono is very regimented for dimensionality of, for proportions of the body, right? So instead of having to manufacture these widths of fabric, and then you cut out of that and you create your, your different shaped garments, they just use the full width of the fabric, and then you just cut your different lengths. Um, and I think that's very a very elegant solution. And then they create all these different, like, folding techniques um, to, to create interest, right? So um, if you're a laborer, you, you, you don't want that full sleeve. You want it to taper. So this little hand hand coat is perfect because they just fold that up and stitch it. And then you have a, a built-in taper. Very cool. Matt, makers and crafting. Okay. That's good to know. I'll have to go with that. Um, and just chatting. I mean, just chatting isn't really, like, exactly the right thing. That's why I put AMA, because I do kind of want people to come in here and watch the stream and ask me questions about sewing. Whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. But <laughs> I thought that would be cool to, like, start a dialogue. Um, okay, so next I need to make the front. So I have my little shaped pockets um, that are just going to plop on the front there, but I need to finish my top edge so that obviously you don't just have like a raw edge on the inside of the pocket. These things are going to go through the wash, so um, I'm going to go and press them. I'm just going to do a double roll. Um, I wanted a little 3 8 inch um, seam, so I cut it appropriately. It's um, a little three quarter inch. Let's see. So, okay, I'm gonna go press these and then I will be right back. Let me get the tape off of there. You never want to press over your tape, it's not good for your iron. <laughs>
Okay. I don't know if you can hear that. My cat, Ganymede, is underneath my table right now. There's somebody outside the window, and she's, like, growling at them. She's such a weirdo. All right, so I rolled over the top um, hem of my pockets, um, and so now I'm just going to top stitch them. Nice little top stitch. Here's what the outside is going to look like. Just plain, you know, you can't really see it. Just looks like a line of stitching. one of those finishing techniques um, that can make your project just look so professional. Um, if you practice top stitching and edge stitching to where you um, just have a really clean stitch, like very um, consistent, it's really going to make your projects look really nice and look like they could be bought at a store which is kind of the end goal for um everything is that you want it to look not i don't want to say commercial but professional okay so now i'm going to um right these aren't quite <laughs> There we go. So now I'm just going to kind of baste these on. I want my basting stitch to be on the outside um, of the sewing line so that we don't see it in um, the finished piece. I could also just not baste this and slap the, um, the next piece on top of it and that would be fine because you know this isn't like a really wiggly thing a lot of times you'll you want to baste in first if you think that your fabric is gonna like wiggle around uh, just to make sure that you don't get any like movement or weirdness this is muslin shit's not gonna move but hi Ganymede <laughs> she's come to help okay come on kitty and by help, I mean walk all over my fabric. I have a baby gay out there. It keeps everything out except Ganymede. Titan, our other cat, will just sit out there and cry her little head off. Ganymede, she does not care. She just like, I don't know how on earth she gets in. Maybe she jumps over it? I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll turn around and she's there. I'm like, I put this gate up so you couldn't get in here, but here we are. one and now we do the other side 
Then we're gonna attach the yolks on our front. Once I've got the yolks on, I'm gonna go ahead and um, hop over to the serger, which is right next to uh, this machine. It's over here. And I'm gonna serge those yolks together, or yolks, those seams together so that they look all nice and pretty on the inside. Oops, I didn't baste my hem. Oopsie doodle. Again, it doesn't really matter because, like I said, I'm pretty confident that this muslin isn't going to move. Um, but I don't want to get to the end of my project since I've never built this particular garment before and be like, ruh -roh, some weird shit happened, and then I gotta go and fix it. Um, I'd really rather everything just finishes beautifully and works exactly how I want it to. So I'm going to go ahead and take the time to do this. Um, and then probably for the final one, I'll do the yolks first. And then um, I will only base the front half of this because I'll stitch the sides together in one go with the pocket kind of sandwiched in between. Depends on how things go in this run. Um, that's how I would like to do it because it would save me this step of basting. But again, I'm not sure um, because I've never made this before exactly how it's gonna go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hedge my bets. He's scanning me again. Hi, girl. Off she goes. She's gonna go rummage around. Oh, no, she's gonna lay over there on the tile. She's so funny. She pretends that she doesn't really care about us. Um, she doesn't come in like snuggle in bed with us or anything like that, like Titan does, but she's always got to be in the same area with one of us. And anytime I come down here to sew, she's got to come and check it out. I don't know if it's just, she's just curious or she wants to hang out. Now we have our pockets basted onto the fronts. You can see, nice little pocket there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the yolks on the fronts. And I'll put the yolks on the center back. And then we'll go and do our, um, I gotta move this collar because it's in the way. Okay, here are my center front yolks. They are the exact same. They're literally just a, it's not even a rectangle. It's kind of like a square. So it doesn't matter which one goes where. I'm going to put, I was a big old doofus. <laughs> I was in like straight up theater mode and I just wrote this in Sharpie. So I'm going to put that at the shoulder <laughs> so you don't see it. And I hope when I do the dye work, it'll just kind of disappear. Because I'm going to do some, um, I'm going to dye using indigo dyes. So maybe it'll go away. That would be nice. Um, in the future, I am going to be buying a five thread serger. And when I get that, things like 
like these types of seams, I'll just run it through the five thread serger and then I don't have to stitch it and then serge it because it's just an extra step. And the five thread um, can stitch and serge at the same time, whereas my little four thread here, it don't cut it. It just surges, which is not enough to really um, put a garment together. But thre five threads aren't super cheap, and I, I've had this little four thread for um, forever, basically. Does this need to open? I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't. Myself whether that part of the seam needs to open so like whether you stitch all the way to the edge of the fabric or you just stitch to the edge of the other stitching line the corner depends on whether or not that needs to open um, the yoke on this is purely decorative it doesn't need to open so like this right here if I was inserting something into that corner, I would need to leave this open so I could press it um, so that the corner could like turn basically, but I don't need to do that. It's just a straight seam. So I can stitch it all the way to the edge. Uh, a lot of times in theater, I'll just back stitch into the corner if I'm not sure. Because you don't want to have to split the stitch later. But so basically, I'm going to stitch those two seams together. Um, I'm going to run them through the serger, the fronts and the backs, and then I'm going to um, stitch the front and the back shoulder seam together, run that through the serger, those seams through the serger, and then I'm going to serge the whole side seam together on both sides. I'm not going to bother with the next seam because that's going to get bound into the collar, so it doesn't need to be serged at all. Woo! Sleep tried to drag my uh... snips right off the table. Okay, that's my front stun. Now I'm going to do my back. I'm going to throw this over here. To the serger. Here's my back yoke. Pop the tape off of there. Again, that's kind of force a habit from theater. Um, and because I knew that I wasn't going to be sewing this right away because I had a bunch of other stuff to do. Um, but a lot of times it's nice for your stitchers to write the piece names on a piece of tape. So they don't get lost. Um, so you can literally just be like, uh, once you've, um, depending on who's cutting it, right? Sometimes it's a cutter. Sometimes the cutter draper cuts it. Um, just totally depends on what's going on with your production. But once it's all cut, you throw it in a build box um, and you can, then when your stitcher comes available and is like, okay, what's what's next? You can just be like, there's there's the next build box. Go pull this guy's whatever garment. Um, you know, if, if if I was doing this for a production, I would be like, go pull Trace Henton, and then um, 
if you have questions, you can come and ask me, depending on whether they've built one before, right? So if we're doing, if it's like for the opera and we're doing a chorus where everybody's, you know, obviously the chorus generally wears a lot of the same stuff, like each chorus member will, will have to make like 20 of something or whatever. Um, then it'll be like, go grab this person's whatever. And if my stitcher, if this is like the fifth one that my stitcher is putting together, I'll be like, there's no changes, you know, just go ahead and throw that thing together. And all the pieces are labeled, so they're never gonna get lost. Everything's notched. They don't need my instruction. They can just go do it. If, um, if it's the first one that they're making, or if it's something kind of specific, like for a principal, tell them, you know, this is the specific thing, watch out for this thing, it's kind of weird or whatever. Um, but, you know, at HGO is the tailor. Hold on, I gotta blow my nose. With tailoring, with building suits, there's a very specific order of operations. Um, and I would be working with the same team over and over again so they know how I want a suit to be constructed and how I pattern. So if there's anything specific, then I'll be like, hey, watch out for X. But the vast majority of the time, it's just like, go grab who whoever's vest, um, throw that thing together, you know, use X, Y, and Z for, uh, well, if I'm telling the cutters, I'll instruct them on what um, interfacings I want based on what fabrics and, and whatever. But for the stitcher, I'll just be like, it's all in there. Go do it. If you have questions, ask me. Pattern's over there. You can pull it. Um, but you want to make sure that you label everything so you can just be like, go, go, go. <laughs> and when you're stitching for yourself, it can help too, especially when you're doing stuff like uh, this hen tent is, it's just all rectangles. <laughs> so it would be very easy for me to get lost, even though I'd are, I patterned it and cut it myself. I could be like, what the heck is this rectangle supposed to be? And I don't want to have to go compare it to the pattern or even have to like really think about it. I just want to be able to like throw it together. Make sure you notch all your shit and you label all your shit. So now I'm going to come over here and surge all of this. Can't really see me, but I'm over here doing it. <laughs> We've got our little um, seams surged together, so they're nice and pretty. Um, I'm going to press them down because gravity, right? Um, so I don't want to have my seams kind of like, if I press them up, it could kind of like bloop on the inside. So I'm going to press them down this way. And then once I get everything, um, Press down, I get the shoulder seam stitched and surged. I'm gonna surge the side seams around all together so it's just one big surging. And the seam is going to be basically, so like this on the outside is going to be surged and my seam here is gonna be trapped inside that surging. That's how they do it commercially. Well, commercially they do it with a five thread serger so you don't have to sew it, you just surge it. <laughs> I'm gonna go press these.
Okay. So now I'm gonna sew my shoulder seams. I got my back here. Super important when you're doing fronts and backs and you're putting them together, make sure you uh, line them up correctly. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to, to accidentally get them backwards, you know, and you really don't want that happening. So, okay, here's my front. And I know that this little notch here is um, my side seam because my side seam is a little bit um, tapered. Yes. My side seam's a little tapered. I'm gonna plop that on there. Same deal here. Now see, this is where I'm a little bit silly because I told you all about marking everything, how important it is. Um, what's really important is to mark what specifically is your center front and your side seam and your center back. And I didn't do that this time around. Um, again, just because I was like, well, I know that. I don't need to mark that. It's fine. It's going to be obvious that this is my center front. And then you saw me going, my side seam is what's tapered, right? Right? <laughs> Trying to remember what I did a couple of weeks ago. So it's important, even if you think that you know what you're doing, <laughs> even if you do know what you're doing, just mark it, you know, just in case you forget in the future. Especially if you're, um, if sewing isn't your job, if you uh, it's your, if it's your hobby, and you know, like your life is really busy, and maybe I won't get around to sewing this until like a week or two from now, or even a month or two from now, or even a year or two from now. Um, help out future you and just label every single thing and notch every single thing so that when you come finally do come back to that project you're not having to spend like an hour trying to figure out what exactly it is that you did in the past because i have been there and it is not fun <laughs> and it makes you feel very stupid you're like why did i do this and already my experience is that coming back to patterns like a year or patterns um projects like a year or two later, I'm always like, why did I do this? This is so stupid. Uh, because, you know, when you're um, a technician, your abilities evolve. You're always learning uh, new techniques. And so you're already going to be going like, year ago, me, what were you thinking? Don't make it even worse by not marking your stuff. So on my side seam here, I can go all the way to the cut edge, right? Um, because of that, that doesn't need to open, that seam doesn't need to open at all. But on my neck edge, it definitely is going to, um, because it's coming around a curve, it's going to make a big difference. So I want to leave that open so that I can clip in, I can clip into it and clip away um, from it so that my collar will roll around nicely. And leaving that seam open essentially acts as a clip. Um, that's one less place that I need to clip the, into the um, neck edge to get that roll. So I gotta do that over here on this side too. So I gotta make sure I plant my needle exactly in the right spot and then when I'm back stitching that I don't back stitch over my end point. So 
Now I'm going to go over there and surge them and then press them. Um, kind of my rule, everybody's a little bit different. Um, everybody's a little bit different with everything when it comes to sewing, but kind of the way that I do it is whenever I have a shoulder seam that I'm not pressing open, that I'm pressing one way or the other, I always press it back. I think it looks nicer. sure to move my snips back because otherwise I'll be like where my snips go So now I've got like a weird little apron-y thing, <laughs> right? This is the body of my Hanten. Um, so I'm gonna go serge these little side seams and arm eyes uh, so that I can, and also I need to serge my, um, my, uh, sleeves, if I can remember what they're called, <laughs> then I'm going to stitch the side seam to where the sleeve comes in, and then I'm going to bag the little sleeve into it. And actually, I think I noticed a very silly little oopsie doodle that I did. Um, yep, on the side seam, um, I didn't I notched in the center on the side front to make that little like uh, uh, angle into the body and I didn't do it on the back which is uh, very silly I don't know how I managed to do that so I have to correct that real quick <laughs>
I'm going to search the side seams. surged and I need to attach my side seams together um, up to the point where the sleeve joins in um, and I need to leave that seam open and I need to stitch it exactly to that point because it's gonna have to open for the point of the sleeve to come in this is what we call a reverse corner and it's a little bit tricky you have to stitch one side and then the other side um, and if I remember patterning this correctly which is a big toss up. <laughs> um, the sleeve actually comes in at that little um, like bevel that I have coming in at the waist. So I'm gonna stitch it to there. Um, and then when we go to install the sleeve, we're gonna see if I was right. <laughs> and this is what I mean about labeling all your shit. I really should have put a little marker here that said, this is where the sleeve joins in, um, if I was really smart. But, uh, here we go. After I do this, I need to remember to surge the sleeve because that's quite important. Um, I was kind of thinking to myself, oh, well, maybe I can do the surging like this, where I surge the um, 
seams together. But as I put that together, I could clearly see pretty early on that there was no way that that was going to be able to be possible because I need it to be open at several points. The seam, that is. Um, so I can't serge them together because then I would essentially be serging the seams closed which would create a structural problem. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start at our point. So I need to make sure I point my needle at just the right spot. And I don't back stitch over my point. God, my sleeve is just determined to drag those snips off the table. So this is what I, this is a step that I meant where I could possibly stitch the pocket and the side seam and the front seam together in a little sandwich, which is a trick that we like to do in stitching because it um, saves us a step. But uh, as you saw, and as I saw, um, I'm happy that I basted it first because what I forgot about was that I'm going to have to put that whole front through the serger. And so I needed the, um, I needed the pocket to be on before I did that. So technically I could just serge it without attaching the pocket, um, without, what I mean is without um, um, basting the pocket on, but that gets a little tricky. And honestly, I don't think it would have saved me enough time for it to be worth it. I'd rather just baste it and be done with it. roll hem on my hem here but I'm kind of content and then I was like well maybe I will um do a binding because I really love how bindings look on the inside you can use a contrasting color and it looks really pretty but um as I'm going to be doing dye work on this and it is still technically a mock-up you know um I think I'm just going to serge the hem turn it up and top stitch it because I think that that will look just fine and um, then it can go through the wash a lot. It's not going to have any problems, which I'm going to need it to do if I'm going to be um, if I'm going to be dyeing it. It's cotton, so I need if I do a base color on it, which I'm going to want to do because I don't want it to just be bare muslin. I need to set that base color in. Um, in the washing machine. And then I'll do whatever tie or stitching work I want on it. Um, and I'll over dye by hand um, using a specific method for um, for cold dye, a fiber reactive cold dye. Um, I have to use some chemicals to set, basically I soak the uh, fabric in, um, in a chemical and I mix the dye in with what we call chemical water. I gotta blow my nose real quick. Chemical water is, it sounds gross, but it's basically urea, um, a specific percentage of urea um in water dissolved in water sounds super gross because urea is obviously you know urine but actually it's just the salt from urea without any of the like other nasty like protein stuff and urine but um if you know anything about dye history you know that people have been using urine to um do dye work and to do to to cure leathers forever um, for all of human history, because the salts are just really good at that. And urine is free.
So I'll over dye using that process. Um, sounds complicated, it's really not. And then uh, once I have to leave it for um, a certain period of time, it's usually at least 24 hours. So if uh, you're worried about it, you can leave it for longer. Generally, uh, what I like to do is just let it dry on its own, all tied up. So once it's totally bone dry, then I will release it from whatever uh, resist I've got going on it, whether it's wrapped around a pole or stitched or whatever. Um, I'll release it from the resist. And then you roll it up in um, newsprint. You want to roll it so that none of the fabric touches any of the other fabric, so you don't get any bleed. Uh, and then you suspend it. I have like chimney flashing. It's, I just got it at Home Depot for really cheap. It's just like a big aluminum pipe, basically. Um, so I have a, um, a gas burner. I fill a big pot with water and then I stick the aluminum pipe in the center of it so that it creates like a steam funnel. You cover the whole pot around it with foil so that all the steam goes up it, through the pipe and you suspend your um, your newspaper roll inside the pipe uh, and you cover it with a towel so that it just, all that steam really saturates into your dye work. And you leave that for an hour till it's totally steamed and that will um, set the dye in whatever, that's a, that's a cellulose process. So uh, that sets the dye in any cellulose um, fiber. Okay, so here is my cute little thingy. With no sleeves yet. My little jacket. It's just a little house coat, doesn't really close. Um, this is one thing that I might change in the final. I actually might get rid of because I'm kind of short and I got I got a booty, um, I might change this little angle so that it doesn't could just kind of get hung up on my butt there. But it's nice for a little house coat. And the sleeve and the collar will give it a little bit more definition. So I'm gonna serge the sleeve. And then I'm going to set the sleeve in. I'm going to press this first. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and hop over there real quick. I'm going to serge these little sleeves here. Hmm, I'm trying to think if I can serge it like that and then just pop it open. Yeah, I can search it there. So that's what I'm gonna do.
Okay, so there's one. We'll do the other real quick.
took a hot minute um <laughs> serging when you have closed seams is like a giant pain it can be done it's just more annoying than serging when the, when the item is flat so um that's another one of those things that like this is one of the reasons that we do mock-ups it's not always necessarily um about resolving fit issues like that's really important but what's also important is figuring out how in the heck this thing goes together. You know what I mean? Because so sometimes um, garments are confusing. You, you don't really know like how it wants to go. So you have to kind of um, practice to get it right, essentially. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press this open. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So this is another example of um, what I was just talking about. It's nice to do a mock-up to figure out exactly how your garment wants to, to go together, right? So um, I wasn't quite sure how I was gonna do this sleeve hem because it comes to a point. That's very strange. Um, how do you finish that, right? And I was thinking about binding it and then just um, pressing back the binding so that it forms like a little, um, little triangle basically and then top stitching that. I don't even have to do that because I surged this while I was pressing the seam open. I noticed that it this the hem basically just follows the seam line here. So if I press this up, it just creates this nice little opening. So essentially the best way to finish this sleeve is to just surge it and top stitch it. Um, because it makes this really nice, pretty simple opening. So Problem solved.
So now I'm going to go ahead and sew these sleeve hems because I figured that out and that's exciting. And then I'm going to sew the um, sleeve onto my body. Okay. So this is a little odd because normally uh, you would sew this. I'm going to take this out until I come back around here, actually. Just put this. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Um, it makes a square, right? That's very strange for a sleeve. Usually a sleeve is a circle. <laughs> but so I want to make this corner look nice and intentional. So I have to choose a spot. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do like this. I'm going to start at my corner and then I'll turn. And again, I got to get my needle dropping in the exact same spot is where I ended it, not for the corner's sake, but for the sake of aesthetics. No one's going to see that, but I'll know it's there. stitching when you're hemming and you're top stitching a hem you want to make sure that from the edge of your hem to your stitch line is consistent so you don't want to be paying attention to um, this side of the um, like the cut edge basically in relation to your needle you always want to be paying attention to the turned under edge, the finished edge, in relation to your um, needle. So that your top stitching on your hem isn't like bleh, all over the place. So now you can kind of see that this sleeve hem in the very back of it, it's very pretty. It makes this little square and the stitching kind of reflects that square. I think that's really pretty. It's very strange for a sleeve to end in a square, but I think it's kind of lovely. Uh oh. My battery's getting low on my tablet, so this might die before I finish streaming. Um, again, this setup is not ideal. I've got a couple of ideas as to how to improve it, so I'll be working on that kind of um, as things go. They're not all going to be implemented at once because I ain't made of money, but uh, <laughs> little by little it'll get better, I promise.
Beautiful. Cool. So we oopsie doodled our way into a very lovely finish for this sleeve, which looks super intentional. <laughs> and um, honestly, that's what mock-ups are for, man. It never hurts to get practice in before you do the finished garment. Sometimes you don't have time and you just have to jump straight into fabric. I hate that. It makes me really stressed out. Um, okay, so... Hmm, big question. This is a notch I didn't think about making, again, because I've never made this garment before. But where's my shoulder? So how I'm gonna figure that out is, um, this is my point, right? That's gonna come to my hip. So obviously whatever uh, half of that is, is gonna be my shoulder seam. Where'd that pencil go? Here it is. Um, again, another good thing about this step, I've never made this garment before, so there, and it's very different from um, a lot of the other garments I've made. So there are things that make sense that I straight up didn't think about. Okay, another thing I need to think about is whether or not I want this um, seam on my front or back. That's a really good question. I think I'm gonna do on the front on one of these garments and on the back on the other so like on the front for for mine and on the back for trays and then we're just going to kind of figure out which one we like better because um if i'm remembering correctly what i did was i structured the yoke to start at the same place as this because this essentially um is going to turn the fabric directionally. Does that make sense? So I actually think it should be on the front. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the front. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll see which way I like it. <laughs> if I like it better on the front or on the back. Okay. So here we go. Now we get to see whether things lined up properly, <laughs> which is always kind of a scary thing. You're like, ooh, did I do my math right? I don't know. Okay, so that lines up nicely. Um, so my sleeve seam is lining up perfectly with my center front yoke seam. That's exactly what I wanted. It always feels good when you're like, oh good, <laughs> my plan is working. This is also gonna be a really weird thing because normally when you do um, a reverse corner, it's usually when you're doing like godets or something like that. Um, you see them a ton in um, 1930s garments. You're sewing one side and then you're sewing the other side. And so you, you sew into one side. Um, and then you turn it over and you sew into the other side. In this case, because it's, it, it ends up being two seams, right? But in this case, because it's the sleeve, our reverse corner is the same seam. So I'm going to start on one side of the reverse corner and I'm going to sew all the way around this big tube to the other side of the reverse corner. This is such a cool garment. I, it's like there are so many little things in it that I have literally never seen anywhere else. And I have been sewing since I was a little kid. <laughs> um, and I have been sewing professionally for quite a long time now. So I find this fascinating. 
It's such a simple little garment too. So now we're going to bring this around to the other side. This is also what's going to be weird is that it's basically like, okay, I think what I need to do is origami this thing through the sleeve so that it's sitting inside my tube. And go on in there. Come on. It doesn't want to because it's like so narrow at the bottom, basically. Okay. Mmm, I see what the problem is. Okay, so I am gonna do it in two stitches. I could probably make it work in one but it's gonna be a giant pain because this needs to sit flat like this. Uh, there it goes. 